judging by the pollution content of the atmosphere, I believe we have arrived. It's the planet stupid. No, 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 it's the planet stupid. Our guide for It's the Planet Stupid is eco-journalist Belinda Weymouth. Belinda, welcome. Thank you for being here. And today uh, there is big news out of your home country. Uh, I think oh, Belinda's Belinda, you muted. muted. She's muted. Can you unmute her? Uh, huh? There we go. I've unmuted. Uh, hey. sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm a big girl. Hey, everybody. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> New Zealand, it's being battered by this uh, uh, cyclone, Gabrielle, and it's very intense, and it's very intense where um, my family live. And they were warned, you know, the Met Office, my sister said, were amazing. You know, you're the category orange, but that could change. And it did. It changed to a red. My mum and stepfather were told that they might be being evacuated out of their retirement uh, villa because there's this big creek that runs right behind it. And it's sort of unbelievable, you know, because it's 16 inches of rain, but that 16 inches so quickly turns into something so devastating. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in the wrong place and those floodwaters come up, you know, there were houses that the, you know, the water, they, you know, the family said it happened so fast. It was suddenly, you know, all the way up to the ceiling. Um, and, you know, four of the six deaths have happened in Hawke's Bay where my family is. So, it's just been, you know, awful, awful, awful. Uh, can you can you tell us uh, Americans who live a long way from things, and we, you know, our schools are what they are, uh, the New Zealand layout to the degree that we need to know it to appreciate this story? Because New Zealand is not just one uh, piece of land, right? No, no, we're, a, we're we're two main islands. Very imaginatively, they're called the North and the South Island. Um, <laughs> okay, I don't know how they came up with that. Uh, and then there's a um, there are smaller islands. There's one off the bottom of the South Island called Stewart. But um, so they're two sort of long, thin islands. And we're you know we're very far south. You know when people talk about Australia being down under, we're more down under. We're the last um, fuel stop for U.S. Uh, planes that are on their way to McMurdo Sound in the uh, in Antarctica. They stop in New Zealand to refuel. Um, as they're on their way to that base. So we're very far south. We have penguins. Um, and, and one of the things I, I uh, tweeted this story this morning, it came out in December, this new research talking about the southern hemisphere versus the northern hemisphere with storms. And the thing about the southern hemisphere is, you know, you guys just have to have a quick look at the globe. You don't have to spend too long, but you can see that the planet's really... Uh, top heavy. Most of the continents and the land masses are in the northern hemisphere. Uh, and we don't have a lot going on. And I mean, it's lovely. The South Pacific has got, you know, you know, South, you know, we've got islands, we've got Australia, you know, and then you've got the um, southern part of Africa and the southern, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, South America. And then, you know, that's kind of it until you get down to Antarctica. And what these scientists have found is that the Southern Hemisphere is actually 24% uh, more stormy than the Northern Hemisphere. And one of the reasons is topography. So we know this living on the um, uh, West Coast here in California, you know, when the big storms come off the uh, Pacific Ocean, because, you know, storms, you know, come off the oceans. And they hit the Sierra Nevadas, the White Mountains. They, you know, have to travel up. You know, the airstream has to travel up um, uh, that uh, mountain as it's heading east, and it reaches what's called its dew point, drops all its precipitation, either as rain or snow. And then by the time it's heading, you know, further east into the continent, uh, the moisture is gone, and there just isn't that kind of topography, uh, you know, happening. Uh, in the southern hemisphere, so you know these uh, these crazy uh, hurricanes when they come, you know cyclones, typhoons, you know those are the three names depending where you live. Uh, there was one that hit Fiji in 2020, and it had the highest recorded winds of any hurricane ever. The winds got up to 149 miles an hour with wind gusts of 214 miles an hour you know wow. that's a lot when you're a little pacific island uh with yeah. what island. yeah yeah that's that is true i mean and, and those are wind whipped waves i mean that's the, the storm surge is increased by what you're talking about 
Yeah, yeah. There's, so, so, so the other thing that's driving storms, you know, and the things that really affect it, you know, are also the ocean currents. Now, the thing is, in the southern hemisphere, the ocean currents are still working as they do, you know, and the cold water upwells, you know, from the Antarctic, and then it heads up. Um, there are these huge o ocean uh, circulation models, and I'm, I won't get too bogged down in them. But what's happened in the Northern Hemisphere is circulation systems are really being affected by um, the uh, loss of sea ice and the heating up of the oceans. And so uh, they're slowing down the circulations. Uh, this, uh, you know, these big currents are slowing down and that's also reducing storms in the northern hemisphere not that the northern hemisphere is not having its share of storms because you know we just had these crazy atmospheric rivers you know hit northern california um and we had 24 people die you know over the you know in that three week period from december into january and you know, it's, this is intense, you know, this is really intense what's happening. And, and, you know, there was, and, you know, I, I really like to talk good news. So <laughs> I, uh, this is hard for me to get out, but, but, you know, I mean, the other thing they just reported is that, you know, with all the glaciers that are at risk of melting, you know, there are 15 million people in the world who live close enough to a glacier that that melting is going to impact them. I mean, this is, you know, yeah, that's as it. I, that's yeah. a new report, and that that is big, big news of the day. And also, it lets us hear you say the word glacier, the way you say it, which is uh, twice the I got bonus. it. It's awesome. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but what what you're seeing is a process that we're going to see globally. Uh, you're saying mm -hmm. a supercharging of these storms of the sort that we we've, we've just seen, and in the southern hemisphere, the impact is felt enormously. We don't get cyclones, hurricanes, typhoons, whatever you want to call them on the West Coast, because of, we get the effects of them as they fall apart from Mexico, because of, of that upwelling you're talking about. So the water's too cold to support and continue to sustain tropical weather systems like that. But that's the only reason we don't get them, because the water is certainly warming to the point that we're seeing more and more ferocious of weather systems like this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On the with the continental US, we're seeing our hurricanes. You know, they're coming up off you know the Gulf of Mexico and up the Atlantic and hit, hitting the eastern seaboard. I mean, you know, look what poor Lu Louisiana has been through. What happens in Florida? You know, I mean, you know, Miami is already you know uh, being being inundated by seawater. That's from sea level rise, and that's before you even get one of these you know tropical hur hurricanes. You know, Belinda, are there mitigation, uh, what you mentioned, Florida, and it made me think of it, there are mitigation measures being taken along the coast of Florida. I mean, sadly, you know, there are no wholesale mitigation measures to when it comes to, uh, the, well, with the, the fossil fuels that get out into the environment and are creating this issue. But what uh, is happening is they are building bigger seawalls. We're having them in the Bay Area as well. San Francisco is looking at them, and there's a whole plan on the West Coast. Is that happening in New Zealand? I would think so. You know, it hasn't up until now. And um, I mean, you have to be so careful with seawalls because, you know, I mean, you know, they can do so much. But, you know, we've talked about this before, you know, the the people up in um, Malibu uh, putting up big rocks in front of their houses. You know, I'm thinking of, you know, Malibu, you know, the colony there, and they have those enormous boulders that they bring in. Well, they just actually exacerbate the problem because the ocean comes in and it does this thing called scouring. So it washes in around the, the rocks. And of course, water can, you know, gets into every nook and cranny, and then it just scours out the sand even more. So they they lose even more of their beach. You know, it's crazy. And the, you know, the thing that we need to be doing as far as, you know, living close to the water is, you know, it's managed retreat. And I know people don't want to hear that, but, you know, in New Zealand, what was interesting is, you know, I've been following it super, super closely. And, you know, it's really heartbreaking because, you know, they say there are 3000 people who are still uncontactable. So, you know, the, the, um, six dead, they think it's, you know, it's going to be a lot more than that. But, you know, people talked about being up above rivers and looking down and just seeing their neighbors' houses washed away, just washed away in front of them. And a lot, you know, so if you're living in these 
low-lying areas, reclaimed areas. So you look at a lot of Florida, that's, you know, a lot of that is reclaimed. You know, when I go to North Carolina, where my uh, in-laws live, and we go to the beach, and I see how close to the, you know, to the coastline, you know, apartment buildings are. It's just, yeah. you know, this is not going to be safe. And it doesn't, you know, yeah. you can, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you know, we have to be moving further away because of course it's gorgeous to live close to the ocean and close to a river or a creek, but these are going to become, you know, more and more dangerous locations. Sure, um, and they, these are uninhabitable sp spaces and taxpayers in this country and other countries, governments are going to have to be rebuilding more and more. And it's just going to be uh, an encumbrance, a fiscal encumbrance that you, you can't do. Encumbrance should be a ding word, by the way, Albert. Yes, um, yes. Uh, 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 Belinda, uh, I encourage people to follow you on social media. There is a lot of good stuff out of Belinda Weymouth. It's W-A-Y-M-O-U-T-H. She's an eco-journalist who does post a lot of encouraging things, but also some climate realities. So, again, on Twitter, it's at Belinda Weymouth, W-A-Y-M-O-U-T-H. Same thing. I was on Instagram uh, love that you spend time with us. Thank you for being here today, Belinda. Yeah. And good luck to your family. Uh, we're thinking of them. By the way, what is the forecast for that hurricane, for that cyclone? I mean, is The hurricane, thank goodness, has moved um, offshore. So it's moved off the two little skinny islands that are New Zealand. And uh, But they did say that... Uh, Last night, they were going to be getting uh, thunderstorms and more rain. And of course, you know, the earth is just absolutely saturated. saturated it can't sure. absorb any. And that's, you know, the yeah. problem. So, yeah. you know, hopefully it will be over soon. And then the cleanup is just monumental. I mean, they're saying they'll take international aid. I mean, it's 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 bad. It's really bad. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for being here again. Uh, we're thinking yes. of them. And yes, I mean, yeah. New Zealand's got uh, serious issues and the international community is going to have to step up. So uh, until next week, thank you, Linda Webb. Bye-bye.